before we dig in stats, tell us a little bit about the data that we do have coming in and how the nation is picking. Yeah, so what we do is we keep track of the millions of picks we get in our Bracken Challenge games, both men and women. Uh, we do this every year and just fun seeing in real time what the nation's picking. Uh, at least for me personally, I'm like, you know, am I thinking differently than everyone else is? Does that make me wrong? Is that going to make me right? Uh, you start doubting yourself. Um, but we get to look now at kind of what the early data is. Um, Mikhail, where do you want to start? Upsets, Cinderella's, champion? Where do you want to go first? Let's start with the most popular championship picks. All right. So you can see here, UConn, probably not too surprising, is clearly the favorite right now at almost 25%. Uh, you can see here that I have two different columns here. The, the ones that are in color are the most recent data runs we've done. The ones on the right, we wanted to late Sunday night. because I, I find it interesting to see if anything's changed as we get closer to Thursday and bracket stock for men's yeah. and as we're closer to bracket stock for Friday for women. So you can see not really much. UConn is still clearly the top pick. Of course, UConn's defending national champion. Uh, no one overall C, trying to be the first team to go back-to-back -back since Florida in 06 and 07. So uh, probably not too surprising with the top pick, but you can really see that gap between UConn and North Carolina at uh, the top two. Um, and if kids are wondering for that 25%, where that kind of ranks in terms of since we've been doing this, it's better than last year in terms of the top pick. So Houston was the top pick last year, about 20%, which is pretty good, you know, pretty much probably on average, but uh, that 25% UConn has right now, that's nowhere close to what we saw uh, with Duke and Zion in 2019. Uh, they were uh, coming in about 39%. And then uh, Kentucky in 2015, probably not too surprising because they're undefeated going into that tournament. They were about 46 and percent. So again, not to say that UConn's not getting picked a lot. They were getting picked a lot. But uh, just kind of show like how things can ebb and flow each year uh, in terms of what the nation kind of thinks as the, the go-to picks here. Well, for those who don't know, how often do the top pick teams actually win it? Yeah, so uh, not too much. So since we've been doing this since 2014, it's only happened twice. Uh, and funny enough, those are years where the most picked team wasn't like the huge kind of favorite going in, which is kind of funny. Um, so that would be uh, UNC in 2017 uh, and Villanova in 2018. Those are two times they've matched in terms of what the nation thought was going to happen and what actually did happen on the court. Uh, but again, things can get weird. Uh, speak, you know, UConn is the favorite uh, this year. Last year, they were picked on 2%, and we know what happened there. Uh, but of course, UConn UConn was predicted on 0.23% uh, way back when they kind of shocked the nation as a seven seed and won it all. So uh, again, things, that's what March is about. So the craziness. So it's good to be, you know, picked this high because it means you're probably pretty good, but it doesn't mean you're going to uh, for sure think going to gonna win it all. And Kentucky, a three seed, looks like they're ahead of Arizona, Iowa State there. Yeah. Yeah, so this kind of brings a good point to what we saw last year. Uh, Duke was a five seed last year, but they were – by far the most popular five seed. They were picked ahead of a lot of other seeds uh, ranked ahead of them, some teams. And you see Kentucky there's number five overall, just despite being only a three seed. Uh, it's, it's you know, they're very popular, of course. Uh, they have a lot of fans. People recognize that name. They have rich history. So it's not too surprising they're getting picked at the rate they are, but it's still kind of interesting to note that they're ahead of all the two seeds, which I thought kind of, kind of fascinating, especially when you look at, you know, Marquette, who's a two seed and is getting picked on less than 2% of brackets. Um, so just kind of show like, you know, seeds obviously matter in terms of who like maybe people, the favorites are, but it can really, the difference between the most picked and least picked on the seed line can really vary a lot. Um, you can see you know, Kentucky is definitely the big one to look out for. We'll see if it changes as brackets get closer. You Kind of wonder, do the diehard fans, are they the ones filling out brackets first? You know, the Kentucky fans saying, oh, I know I'm picking. Uh, maybe we'll see rise or fall a little bit as maybe more casual or non-Kentucky fans finish. Um, that's why I think it's fun tracking these over the few days before bracket stock to see, you know, what where, where we kind of move on the favorites uh, and pick lines. Before we get into some upset picks, you've been doing this a long time, Stats. What are some of the weirdest things you've seen over the years? Anything super strange? Yeah, so I would say, so I mentioned uh, maybe in terms of uh, this year, I kind of thought that you come maybe a little higher, to be honest with you, um, mm -hmm. just because the narrative going in is they're the big favorite. They look, they were so dominant last year and they were only a four seed last year. Um, so I think that's kind of interesting. Um, it's the one thing that we see through the years is the names that people remember, whether it's the big name programs or we'll see in a little bit, the Cinderella's 
people remember those names. So even if it was only two, three years ago, be like, oh yeah, I remember them. They, they busted my bracket or they won me my bracket, uh, you know, a few years back. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of the big thing that people are excited about um, is trying to yeah. predict the Cinderella's. <laughs> And stats, I can't decide if I think Purdue at a little over 8% is high or low because, you know, they've got Zach Eady. There's the redemption story, but the past three years in March Madness has not been kind to the Boilermakers. Yeah, they're a really fascinating team, uh, Mikhail. I could, you know, I go back and forth for myself. Like, do I have them winning the whole thing because everyone else is picking, you know, UConn? Do I, but there's been so burned the last few years by these upsets um, that you kind of start second guessing yourself a little bit about being like, you're trying to like, you know, trying to outsmart yourself with these picks sometimes. Um, yeah, but you're right. I mean, like, that narrative they, is so good. Are they due or are yeah. we, should we just not trust them? Yeah. And of course, the thing is, you know, 8% is not low. It's just anytime a team is about 25%, I mean, it's kind of, I know math scary, it can be scary. It scares me sometimes. But when you think about, 25% saying that a quarter of people are picking UConn to win. That's a huge percentage of people yeah. that are just going with UConn. So any, everyone else is going to seem a lot smaller by comparison, but 8% is not bad. You know, that's, you know, that's very, very good. You can see there's not much difference between the other two, other three, one seeds after UConn. So Purdue could easily move up or even down. I mean, Kentucky seems to be getting more and more popular while look at Purdue, they seem to be getting, you know, they dropped a little bit uh, since Sunday night. So we're going to see if that changes too. Um, so yeah, I'm really curious to see if, if these kind of hold it all, if anyone kind of rises up, if UConn gets more popular as like the default option for a lot of people or if it gets a little more interesting, but we have a lot, long ways to go. Well, let's get to first round upset picks. Who do fans have yeah. as their upset picks? Yeah. So as fun as this talk about championship picks, this is where I'm most excited is seeing, you know, who the Cinderella's are going to be or who people think the Cinderella's are going to be because I don't know about you, but what makes March Madness so special is the upset Cinderella's that you can't pick or you don't pick. That's because, I mean, no one saw FDU happen uh, last year. FDU was uh, one of the least picked teams in the field last year, even on the 16 seed line. And, and we, we know what happened there. Um, but here are just some kind of early ones. Now, these are just for first round. So you can see NC State. Uh, in terms of upset, which we define as a win by a team seeded five seeds worse than our opponent. So that first round that starts with 11 over sixes. NC State is the top one at above 46%. You can see here, that's pretty good. You know, the fourth most picked upset in history. Uh, NC State wow. won five, yeah, five games in five days to win, win the ACC tournament. Um, so there's kind of people like feel like they're hot. You know, there's a lot of questions about how hot a team is going to determine if that matters or not. But people, it does you know, it does stick in your head and be like, oh yeah. I mean, the, I, I, we saw them win a championship a few days back in the ACC. So kind of, you know, people really remember that. And Oregon, you know, is also up there. They won the Pac-12 tournament by winning a lot of games in a row. Um, so they're coming in pretty good about 44 and a half percent. Yeah. And on, this, on yeah. Oregon stats, I wonder if fans are rooting for that storyline there with Jermaine Kuznard playing against his former, former team in the first round. That could be a factor too. Yeah, it really is. And and I think the other question about South Carolina too is that they're a six seed. I think people may, they're not, but you're not a team that you usually seeing the tournament. So I think that's part of it as well. Well, Oregon has made runs before. They made the Sweet 16 as a 12 seed a few years back in 2019. So I think people remember. Um, so I'm curious to see if, if this number holds. But you can see here since Sunday, that number has risen quite a bit. So I'm kind of curious if that even goes even higher for Oregon as we get closer to bracket soccer. Or maybe not. Maybe by talking about it, people are now scared off of picking Oregon now um, about trying to like, you know, reverse course and pick uh, South Carolina. Um, any other, like, want to go deeper in the seed lines? Any uh, the lower seeds? Well, yeah, actually, because I've got a question coming in from YouTube from David. And he said, yeah. Wayne, can you please rank the number 12 seeds pick to win first round games from most picked to least picked? That should be easy with your spreadsheet here. Yes. So you can see here, uh, James Madison is the favorite 12 seed at 42 and a half percent. That's the fourth most pick 12 seed in PCG history. People remember that uh, Murray State and John Morant, they were the most popular 12 seed we've seen in 2019 and they won. So a lot, sometimes, you know, a lot of times the nation is right with these upset picks. It does happen. Um, so you can see there, J JMU, uh, 30 game winner. Um, and it, they're kind of interesting 12 seed. You know, they won 30 games, one of only four teams in the field that has won at least 30 games. Uh, so it's pretty good company being in, not too many teams have done that. But also, they've been on the radar since November when they upset Michigan State, uh, which was a preseason top five team. Michigan State, of course, fell off 
a little bit, you know, got in the field, probably won't go too far, but is though you never know with March. Um, but they were ranked for the first time ever after knocking off Michigan state. So they've been kind of people who've been following basketball are aware of seeing James Madison in headlines since November. So, you know, they're kind of, you know, they stuck in people's minds a little bit here. So that could be a popular one as well. And you see grand Canyon, another good team, one of the, you know, one of the coolest fan bases in the nation. Um, I'd love to go to a game there one day. Um, of course, March madness neutral site. So they, you know, won't be a home game maybe, but, uh, the grand Canyon's also, Pretty very uh, well liked uh, by people to make pull the upset. Um, so those are kind of the, the two big ones that I would say on the 12 seed line. And um, then of course, McNeese nice is interesting. Uh, they're only the third pick 12 seed, but <laughs> if you go down the road, if I can jump ahead a little bit, we saw this on the yeah. last one. Um, they're picked to win the, the whole thing. Six games on one percent of brackets, which doesn't sound like a lot when you talk about one of a hundred, but for a 12 seed, that is really, really high. So that's ahead of you can see here, that's ahead of all the six seeds, sevens, eights, nines. Now, some of that is because the way the bracket works, you know, to make the sweet 16 as a 12 seed, you don't have to face a one, a two, or three seed. Well, you right. know, eight, nine games, you know, they might have a good chance of winning that first round, but then you run to a, a number one seed. So that's part of the reason why McNeese gets help out a little bit by being picked so high. But that's just a crazy high number, um, especially when that's well ahead of the other 12 seeds that are getting picked in the first round by a much higher rate. So I think part of the reason for that, um, at least in terms of McNeese, that we're seeing in the data is people who are picking McNeese are sticking with them at like 50-ish percent rate. So if you pick them to win the first round, half those people are picking them to win the next round. Half those people are picking them to win the next round. So there's a lot of loyalty with uh, McNeese. Um, they've lost just one game since uh, December. Um, uh, so they're just like, just it's the dominant role. Um, Shadow Wells scored 27 points in the both Southland tournament wins so that you know they can get out and get it. Um, so you can see McNeese is very, very popular, the 12 seed line. Um, and of course, UAB is is next at 22%, which again, for the least picked 12 seed, that's a very high number uh, on the 12 seed line. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and one, another quick thing I want to point out is uh, St. Peter's. Because you mentioned Purdue yeah, having uh, some them. upset. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, St. Peter's, of course, made history two years ago, uh, the first 15 seed to make the Elite Eight um, and then beat Purdue in the Sweet 16. Um, so you can see here, they're almost at 8% to win the first round. That's that's just truly just crazy to think about. Uh, but you can see that's the most picked 15 on record that we've seen. Uh, that beat last year Colgate was the most pick 15 we've seen. And Colgate was wow. a team that has been the tournament a lot of years in a row now. Um, so like people remember that name. They haven't won yet, but usually people remember it. And you can see they're back again this year, Colgate. So, um, but St. Peter's, you can tell people are feeling the Peacocks again. Things that they, they, can, they can get it done in the upset. We'll see if it works out or not. But I think people want to get on the bandwagon now. And if it happens again, they can say, see, I knew it was going to happen. I called it. <laughs> There you go. So there you have it, everybody. Those are the most popular Cinderella picks, it seems like. McNeese, St. Peter's maybe in the first round. How about games that are giving people trouble stats? So a game that's close to 50-50 on percentages. Nobody can yeah, decide. So, that's usually me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's me. I'm still kind of debating changes I'm going to make for my bracket still. So, um, yeah, so you can see here, not too surprising. A lot of like the, you can see some seven, eight, sixes but really it's this game that's interesting um six elevens have been the hardest one to pick for a lot of people which i think happens a lot when the 11 seeds are you know the big conference schools that people are familiar with and have a lot of a lot of fans with so people remember those um just uh, a few years back georgetown in 2021 uh they came out of nowhere and won their conference tournament and they were the most popular Cinderella that year, and they lost to Colorado. So I'm not saying that things can happen to NC State and Oregon, who did the same thing. But I'm just saying it, it's those are big programs that people are familiar with. They see them in the tournament a lot, and they have a very large fan bases. And it's hard not to get not to pick your team, right? And we have to pick your favorite team. So uh, oh, I think yeah. that's part of it as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, stats. This is all good stuff. Any other anomalies you want to point out before we move on to the women's side? Yeah, I think there's just really some cool stuff here, um, just in terms of teams that you think can make on runs in Final Four and Sweet 16s. It's just a lot of cool things you can see. Um, 
things could change though. And, you know, as we get closer to, to brackets lock, like I said, I kind of wonder about the, the order of the champion picks. If uh, I thought Houston would be a little higher, to be honest. Um, yeah. But uh, I kind of wonder if they'll kind of move up a little bit. Uh, maybe they'll leave from uh, UNC to be the second top choice. But again, we have a long way to go um, before brackets lock. So we'll see if things change there.